Welcome back. A new development tonight in a CBS 4 News investigation that we broke right here at 7 p.m. last night. Investigator Jim DeFeedy joins us now with the latest on some questionable decisions made by Governor Scott's administration. Jim. Uh, Rick, Lauren, yeah, I'm not used to Lauren being here. Well, <laughs> last night, CBS 4 News broke the story about a never-before-seen contract issued by the Scott administration immediately after Hurricane Irma that dramatically raises the cost of cleaning up the Florida Keys. Before the storm, there were companies like Ashbrit, which had existing agreements in Monroe County to clear debris. The Scott administration disregarded those contracts and issued an emergency bid through the Florida Department of Transportation that is adding millions, if not tens of millions, of dollars to the cost of cleaning up the keys. Take, for example, refrigerators. Thousands of refrigerators were destroyed in the keys because of Hurricane Irma. Under its contract with Monroe County, Ashbrit receives between $73 and $114 for every refrigerator it hauls out of the keys. Under the governor's emergency DOT contract, Community Asphalt has paid $250 to remove a refrigerator from the Keys, while MCM is paid $969. The same goes for removing hazardous trees. The Monroe County contract pays Ashford $295 to remove a hazardous tree that measures 36 inches in diameter. That same tree, under the Scott administration's emergency contract, will cost taxpayers $1,500 if community asphalt removes it, and $1,950 if it is hauled off by MCM. A 32-foot boat that was destroyed in the storm and needs to be removed will cost taxpayers $3,200 under the contract with the City of Key West. Under the emergency DOT contract, community asphalt will be paid by the state $16,000. And if MCM removes that boat, the company will receive $20,672. Now, reaction today to our story has been coming in across the state. Republican State Senator Jack Latvala, who chairs the powerful Senate Appropriations Committee, offered this statement. I'm aware of the report and the concerns that have been raised, and I do think we have a responsibility to look into it. At our next Appropriations Committee hearing on October 25th, we're already planning on examining storm cleanup, and I'm going to have a full vetting of this issue. Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz had this reaction. It demonstrates the governor's utter hypocrisy. Um, the other day in Washington, in a meeting with the Florida delegation and Governor Scott, I specifically asked him why he was standing in the way of municipalities all over the state from being able to do exactly what he forced in Monroe County. He is prohibiting, essentially, cities from renegotiating contracts to get their debris hauled away and refusing to submit those applications to FEMA. That's why we have piles of debris rotting all over the state. Now, that's, that's an important point, because essentially what she's arguing, which is true, is that the governor has been saying all the other cities and counties have to live by their existing pre-storm contracts, yet he did not hold DOT to that same standard. I will also note quickly that we heard late tonight from the Speaker of the Florida House, Richard Corcoran. He said, while there are some concerns, at the end of the day, he believes that the, the state needs to do whatever it could to clean up the Florida Keys which really isn't the issue, it's about the price. All right, Jim, so these uh, different contracts, there's various discrepancies, I mean, hundreds of dollars in between looking at the refrigerator example from the existing contract that there was before and even the two that were selected, they vary widely, $250 for one, $969 for the other. How did they even settle on these numbers? So those were actually the two lowest bids under the emergency contract, which is why you don't do this after the storm hits. When you have the ability to negotiate or put out for open bidding across the state before the storm, you get better prices. When you do it under these sorts of circumstances and you handpicked who's going to bid, you end up with a lot fewer choices and much more greater variety of prices like that. Mm -hmm. So what's the governor saying? So the governor is pushing back hard. His office is, is going against us as well they can. Uh, one of the key issues that they keep coming back to is this notion that they they were asked to do this by Monroe County. But again, we interviewed Monroe, uh, Monroe County Administrator Ramon Gastesi, and we'll have that interview on my show on Sunday, Facing South Florida. They did not ask for DOT to come in and take over. In fact, this, this took them by surprise when DOT came in. And Roman Gastesi said when DOT asked to take over more and more, initially Monroe said, no, we don't need you to. We have contractors. But yet the DOT insisted they come in anyway. CBS 4 investigator Jim DeFeedy. Jim, good work. Thanks so much. Good.